This man has owed a debt to society for 15 years. If you take him now, a child may die. Surely a few days more won't make any difference. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh. Good afternoon, Mr. Paladin. Good afternoon. Any messages for me? Uh, yes. A telegraph came a few minutes ago. I was uh, going to send it up to you. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Huh. Uh, clerk, would you tell Hey Boy I'll be up in my room? I'd like to see him. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Oh, hey, boy, you're just the one I wanted to see. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you enjoy your afternoon walk? I did. Hey, boy, do you have time to come up and help me pack my gear? Oh, yes, sir. Hey, you go away again? I have to make a trip to Fort Larson in Arizona. Arizona? Mm-hmm. Oh, Mr. Paladin, you must be very careful when traveling in Arizona. Why? Uh, maybe you meet Daddy I Dick. <laughs> Daddy I Dick? Oh, he saw Daddy I Dick, he very bad man. Uh, hey, boy, have, have you been reading Ned Buntline again? You watch out for that bad man, Mr. Paladin. Hey, boy, Dead I Dick isn't real. He lives only in Mr. Buntline's imagination. Oh, no, sir. He really lives in Arizona, really. Oh, well, all right. Have it your way. Now, I'll tell you what. If I see Dead Eye riding down the street with his six guns blazing... I'll run into the nearest saloon and hide under the table. Yes, sir. You do that. I was carrying a message to the commanding officer at Fort Larson. It was a personal message, but not urgent, fortunately. I'd been riding for many hours through a hot, desolate stretch of the Arizona desert. My horse and I both needed water. So when I saw a wagon road leading to a ranch, I turned off to follow it. The ranch house was about two miles from the trail, set in a sparse grove of cottonwoods. When I rode into the yard, I found a young woman trying awkwardly and without much success to hitch a horse to a spring wagon. She didn't seem to hear me as I pulled up and dismounted. No. Need a hand, oh, ma'am? Huh? Oh, uh, here now, please, ma'am. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to start with you. No, don't. It's just... Oh, just thank God for you. That's what I... I've been hoping and praying that somebody would come along to help me. Well, look, you come over here in the shade while I do that. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't know how, how awful to feel so helpless. Oh, no, no. That's no job for a woman. My husband and the men have been gone a week driving some stock to San Carlos... I can manage all right alone, only <laughs> my baby. Your baby? My little boy. He's sick. He's terrible sick. I got to get him to a doctor. Where do you have to go? Cotton Willow. That's about 20 miles south. And there isn't a doctor closer? Oh, I guess Dr. Murphy's the only one for hundreds of miles hereabouts. Thank the good Lord for him. And thank the good Lord for sending you along to help me, mister. I'm glad he did. Uh, my name is Paladin. Oh, I'm Elizabeth Higgins. I never figured myself wanting to go to pieces like this, but I'm so scared. That poor little tyke. Now, look, Mrs. Higgins, you go get the little boy ready to travel while I finish this hitching job. I'll drive you to Cotton Willow. Oh, I'm mighty grateful. <laughs> I can't understand it, Mr. Paladin. I can't understand why the doctor's office is all closed up like that. He's probably out on a call. Well, always when he has to go out, he leaves a note on the door saying where he is and when he'll be back. Ooh, ooh, now. 
Now, you wait in the wagon. I'll go into the sheriff's office here. Maybe he'll know where we can find him. How is the boy? Oh, he's quiet now. He's worn out from all that fretting, I guess. But, oh, he's so feverish. Doc Murphy will know what to do. Well, we'll find him. Try not to worry, Mrs. Higgins. Uh, Sheriff? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, Sheriff, my name is Paladin. I'm looking for Dr. Murphy. Mrs. Higgins is out there in the wagon. She has a very sick baby. Oh, Elizabeth Higgins? Yes, I drove her in from the ranch. Uh, Where can we find the doctor? I'm afraid you can't. Why not? Took him this morning on a warrant. You took him on a warrant? Well, what are you talking about? No, not me. A deputy marshal showed up here yesterday with a warrant for the doctor. Nothing I could do. Papers was in order. I had to honor him. What was he wanted for? Oh, a killing in Missouri. Happened a long time ago. But a murder warrant never runs out. But what about Mrs. Higgins' baby? That child needs a doctor. Oh, I'd take Elizabeth and the boy over to my place. The wife's pretty good with folks that's ailing. Ain't another doctor in 200 miles. 200 miles? Sheriff, I've got to catch up with Dr. Murphy. When did they leave? Uh, about noon. They're headed east? Yeah. yeah. Do you know who the deputy marshal is that's, that's taking him in? Yeah. Name is Leo Grange. Leo Grange? Yeah. Why, he's nothing but a rotten bounty hunter. So I've heard, but he had a commission. I made him show it to me. Sure, he takes a deputy commission any place he can wangle one. Grange has been in the business of collecting reward money a long time, and it seldom happens that a, a man in his custody has ever delivered alive. What do you mean? Well, it cuts down on his profits to transport a live prisoner. Well, you don't think... Sheriff, he... I'm going after them and bring that doctor back. That baby needs him. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. While a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax. The laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently overnight. Leo Grange and his prisoner had a good four hour start on me, and they were traveling fast. When I finally caught up with them, they were making camp for the night. I dismounted and walked toward their campfire. All right. What do you want? Put the gun back, Grange. Paladin. Now, since you remember me, maybe you'll remember you were smart enough to back down the last time we met, so put the gun back, Grange. Do it. What are you doing here? I want your prisoner. What? Dr. Murphy. Yes? I've been chasing you all the way from Cotton Willow. There's a little boy who needs you. He is desperately sick. Well, who is it? The Higgins baby. Why, I, I brought that boy into this world. If we leave right now and ride as fast as we can, we might get there in time. It's really serious? Yes, it is. Let's go. Look, there's a thousand dollars on his head. You're not taking that away from me, Paladin. Didn't you hear him? The child may be dying. I, I must go. It's my duty as a doctor. Never mind. You're a prisoner. Mr. Grange, this debt society is so bent on collecting, I've owed for 15 years. Now, surely a few days more won't make any difference. You move and I shoot. Don't you draw that gun, Grange. I'm not taking anything from you, Paladin. I'm an officer of the law. Don't waste that on me, Grange. I know all about you and your commissions. The fact remains that I am a deputy marshal. This is my prisoner. If he moves against my orders, it's attempted escape and I have a right to shoot. Sure, that's the way you usually manage to work things out, isn't it? All right. So it'd be an easy way to make my thousand. Just both of you keep that in mind. 
I'm the law, Paladin. This is a prisoner. And you're buttoned in. Well, let me put you straight. If I have to kill you to save that boy's life, I'll do it. You're trying to do me out of that thousand. Well, you ain't gonna get away with it. Why, you... You're just lucky to have a doctor right here who can take care of that hand for you. You're interfering with the law. Assaulting a deputy marshal. Paladin, you're under arrest. You make me sick. You take him back to that town, I'll swear out charges against you. Dr. Murphy, do what you can for his hand and we'll get started. Yes, we're wasting valuable time. You ain't getting away from me. You wait, I'll show you. I ain't leaving you out of my sight, not for a minute, either of you. You go on in, Doctor. I'll take care of the horses. No, you don't. You're staying together. So I can keep an eye on both of you. Uh, We can't waste time arguing. A horse will have to wait, Paladin. Hello, Clem. Oh, Doc, thank heaven you got here. Come on in. Come on in. Uh, where, Where is he, Clem? Wait a minute. Sheriff Fuller, this man Paladin here is under arrest, and I want him jailed. Now, please, Mr. Green. He's under arrest for interfering with the law and assaulting an officer. Now, take him over to the jail and lock him up. Lock him up? Please, gentlemen, there's no time for this. Well, there's got to be. Fuller, do the job you're paid to do, or I'll see that you lose that badge. What about this, Paladin? I I guess he's within his rights, Sheriff. Well... All right, Grange, all right. Can it wait till morning? I'll be responsible for him. Huh? Take his gun. Yeah. Near, Sheriff. I agree with the doctor. We're wasting time. Well, where is he, Clem? Where's the boy? Oh, he's right in there. Right in there. The wife finally got Elizabeth to lay down. She's upstairs sleeping. First sleep she's had. Well, bring me a basin of water and a towel, will you, Clem? Oh, right. I'll have a look at him. Well, now, hold it. I'm going along. Come on, Paladin, you too. What are you talking about? I meant it. Till I see you behind bars, you ain't getting out of my sight. Don't be a fool, Grange. You understand, I may not be able to make an immediate diagnosis. You just go on, do what you have to do. And when I get Paladin put away, we'll get on with our business. enjoying it less, change to Camels. The Camel blend of costly tobaccos has never been equal for real smoking satisfaction. Have a real cigarette. Have a Camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. It wasn't important to take issue with Leo Grange. All that mattered was the child. So we sat silently through the night while the doctor kept his vigil at the bedside of the little boy. He was grave and concerned. Then finally toward morning, he got up and walked to the window. It's, uh... It's almost daylight, doctor. Yes. That means you're practically on your way to jail, paladin. And Murphy and I can start out again. Now that the doc's done his duty, I'm going to do mine. Doctor, uh, Doctor, you said you'd know by morning. Uh, I do. All night long, I've been 
hoping that what I suspected wasn't true. Paladin, have you been vaccinated? Oh, yes. You, Mr. Grange, you've been vaccinated? <laughs> that hocus pocus. I just as soon have an engine medicine man doing his jig around me. Well, Mr. Grange, you'd better get in touch with your medicine man. This baby has smallpox. Smallpox? Yeah. As far as I know, this is the first case in the area. I'll have to start vaccination. Everyone in town, the surrounding country, we can't let this spread. You mean vaccine? Yeah. And their supply I know of is at Fort Larson. Oh, well, I have business there. I'll get it for you. I'll start now. Paladin, you ain't starting no place except to jail. Grange, I can abide a stubborn man, but not a stupid one. Don't you realize how serious this is? Look here, you've pushed me just as far as you're going to. Now, Mr. Grange, you'd better think about saving yourself. Unless we get some vaccine and fast, I can just about promise you, you're a dead man. Now, that might scare me if I believed you. But it's a trick. You're stalling for time. I'll get the sheriff. Sheriff? No, I couldn't sleep. Been sitting out there all night. Well, how is he, Doc? Uh, smallpox. Oh, no. Oh, I need no. a supply of vaccine from Fort Larson right away. Can I go after it? Have you been vaccinated? Uh, no. Well, then you can't go. Paladin's the logical man. Paladin is under arrest. Oh, now, Grange, in this Sheriff, case... Sheriff, the can... law's the law. That badge says you're supposed to enforce the law, and you don't alter the law to suit your convenience. Come here, Grange. Come here. You look at that child. Look at him. That's smallpox. We don't have a cure for it. Sure as God made little apples, your turn with it is coming. No, no, not me. We can't cure it. We can prevent it with vaccination. When there's been exposure, you, the sheriff, the people in this house, we can, if we work fast enough, ensure a mild attack with vaccination. Nothing can save this baby now. But prayer. I don't think anybody's going to pray over you, Grange. So if you're interested in saving your skin, get some sense. I, I think maybe you mean that. Doctor, I guess Mr. Grange is ready to alter the law. See now, today we got the Allen Ranch, the Daly Ranch, and the Glenville School. That ought to about do it. I guess you've got the whole county vaccinated, Doctor. Huh. It's been quite a battle, hasn't it? Yes. Uh, we didn't have to fight ignorance and superstition. How much easier a doctor's job would be. Oh. Well, might as well look in on the folks here at the sheriff's place. Hey. <laughs> Look there. Dr. Murphy, just a minute. I want to talk to you. Yes, Mr. Grange? I, uh, I want to say so long. Where are you going? I'm riding on. Sure you feel well enough to travel? Sure. And I want to thank you, Doc, for pulling me through the way you did. I was doing my job, Grange. I know how hard you work. I'm glad the little fellow made it. Well, we can thank the good Lord for that. Here, Paladin. What's that? My deputy commission expired three weeks ago while I was sick. Well, so long. Thanks again, Doc. <laughs> Amazing what a little fear of the devil will do to a man. Yeah. Doggone it anyway. What's the matter? Well, this may mean that old warrant for my arrest will just be forgotten. Well, that's good. No, it isn't. Uh, Fifteen years ago, I was accused of killing a man. There's written proof of my innocence. 
But I ran from the charge because somebody who didn't deserve it would have been hurt if the truth were known. Ten years ago, that somebody died, and I've been trying ever since to get back to Missouri to clear my name. But every time I get ready to leave, somebody fractures a bone or decides to have a baby or breaks out in spots. Paladin, would you like a job? Well, sure. What is it? Bounty hunter. Uh, a bounty hunter? <laughs> well, uh, a philanthropic bounty hunter. You take me back to Missouri, turn me in, collect that thousand on my head. What? Think of the nice little hospital I could set up for the folks in this county with that money. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> Dr. Murphy, you have just made a bargain. Here, coffee, Mr. Paladin. Thank you, hey boy. Oh, my. Glad to see you home, safe and sound, Mr. Paladin. Hey, uh, you run into a bad killer there in Arizona? Uh, as a matter of fact, I did. Boy, did I, Dicky? You fix uh, him, I bet. No, uh, hey boy, the killer wasn't Dead Eye Dick. It was smallpox. And I didn't have to fix him. Another man did that quite a few years ago. His name was Edward Jenner, and he discovered vaccine. It's a simple fact that 70% of all mentally ill can be helped to find the way back to normal life. But, and it's a big but, we are not realizing that goal. The reason? It takes more trained doctors and nurses, more facilities and equipment than there are. That's a terrible truth, especially if yours is a family compelled to face it personally. But help is within reach. Money can buy it. We all must help through generous contributions to our local mental health association or to mental health in care of your post office. Give when a mental health bell ringer comes to your door or to mental health care of your post office. Make it soon, so all 70% may be helped. Make it soon, so that new hospitals, new clinics, trained doctors, nurses, and technicians can be rushed into this vital battle for the mental health of the nation. The address again, mental health, care of your post office, or your own front door when a mental health bell ringer arrives. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Frank Cady, Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, and Virginia Gregg. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.